Hey guys, I'm Janet on occasion, and today we're playing the title War Warhammer 2 Battle Replay. So, uh, this one is a community call sent in by the one and only Professor Pone. He is playing the High Elves and he's against Lizardmen. So, he decided to go to the armor piercing front line of White Lions, including the Pure Main Company, that give Guardian to Lords and Heroes, which is pretty cool. Um, also, he's got the Signs of Mathlan that will give a uh, ward save if the magic is high. And to keep magic high, uh, it's kind of twofold. So, here you can see he's got the Lawmaster of Hoeth, and he doesn't really have a lot of very sort of thirsty spells when it comes to Winds of Magic. He's got um, Spirit Leech, which, yeah, it takes eight, but then, you know, Earth Blood's fairly cheap, and when it converges, is fairly cheap. So, you know, he's not going to be draining the Winds of Magic too, too much with the Lawmaster of Hoeth. So, pretty cool. Also, really good anti-infantry, which can be handy against uh, a lot of scary lizards. So, that's pretty damn handy. Also, you can see over here, he has the Everqueen's Court Guard. So, these sisters of Avalon, uh, with their awesome green bows. I do love the look of these guys. Anyway, um, so they also have this ability, uh, the Banner of Avalon, which improves power recharge rate. So, he's going to have higher magic, thanks to these guys, which is pretty cool. So, that ward save is going to last you know, a lot longer, because he's not going to get through the magic as quickly, because it'll keep replenishing, and that's that's really cool. Also, you can see he's got the other sisters of Avalon, uh, just like their sort of special, you know, bannered sisters. Um, they actually also have the uh, flaming and magical and armor-piercing damage, which is pretty great. Um, it is pretty damn good to have armor-piercing missiles against Lizardmen, as I'm sure you can uh, you can understand. You know, dinosaurs, quite a lot of armor. So here you can see he's also got an eagle-claw bolt thrower. This would be really good for getting some early damage in. Yeah early damage in and whittling away, you know, very tough targets. So that's going to be very useful. He's also got some Phoenix Guard. Phoenix Guard, of course, just, they just refuse to die, really. They're just very stubborn. Do a lot of damage, armor piercing, anti-large. Um, leadership is huge. So they're very reliable, um, you know, but expensive. Also, Princess. Here he has a princess. The princess is not uh, the what the dragon's called, although I think it should be. Isn't that right, princess? Yeah! Look at you with your scary teeth. Oh, they need a brush. Anyway, also he's got a princess on the throne here, on top of uh, Princess the Star Dragon. So, um, obviously just really useful. Um, I think I think a princess is a great lord choice for the uh, high elves. You know, that mid... That mass there. I can't speak today. That missile damage is huge. It's so useful. Um, you can just harass things for ages. It's really good. Does a lot of damage. But once you get stuck in, 580 damage? Over 400 of that is armor piercing. That's huge. So that's really going to hurt. And pretty high melee attack and defense. You know, an alright charge bonus too. This is going to be pretty deadly. Also causes terror, of course, because it's a dragon. Getting courage because it's a lord. You know, they can fire while moving, so they're just going to be taking pot shots at whatever. Um, it's pretty crazy. Also, that plus 10 reload skill is definitely going to help. You know, all the sort of stuff below her. Um, and also, she's got the volley of high arrows, which is kind of handy for just, you know, finishing off units and things. It's pretty cool. So, uh, very deadly indeed. So, I like that. I like this army. It's very small and very elite, but it's it's very elite. So there is that. So over here you can see some Pterodon Riders with Fire Leech Bowlers running around the outside. Over here you can see he's got some Croxagors. He has an Ancient Stegodon. These guys are very scary. A lot of health. That missile damage can get a lot of work done too. Um, as well as the anti-infantry, you know, just bounding, crashing, scary dinosaur attacks. Um, pretty cool. So Lotosaurus Warriors in the front. Um, some Skink Warriors on either side. Some Skink Cohort. Um, just to, you know, have some maneuverability on the flanks. Also, he's got some Temple Guard. These guys, very similar to Phoenix Guard. They're just going to be very stubborn and get a lot of damage into big targets. So, uh, pretty scary. Also, there's a Sora Scar veteran. These guys, great anti-large units, and of course, you know, they have all the same things that all heroes have, so they got the charge of cold blood they can use. Of course, it's terror, because it's a big dinosaur, immune to psychology. Uh, he's got that frenzy, which I think is actually what's making him immune to psychology. Yeah, probably. Anyway, um, he's just really good. Sora Scar veterans, I think, are great. Also, a Slan Mage Priest of high magic. You can see here, un Arcane Unforging, uh, the uh, blood... Statuette of Spite. So that's pretty handy as well. Does some good damage. Um, also, Shield of the Old One. It's going to be very useful in this. We'll see it being used rather well. Also, a Banishment, um, Apotheosis for healing things up, Hand of Glory to add to a melee attack. Um, that's mainly what he uses it for in this one. And uh, also, Tempest for stopping flying units, which is pretty important when you've got, you know, dragons on the field. So, pretty cool. We're going to speed things up and see how it goes. So, charging in. See some early damage on the Sora Scar veteran, definitely worthwhile. Even if it just means that, you know, they get whittled down and they kinda need to use a cold blooded early, that's kinda nice. Um, that's that's enough really for the claw bolt thrower to do, but it forces them to come to, you know, the high elves, which is pretty cool. And uh, here, this ancient Stegodon, if we look at his health, um, it is going down really fast. Really fast. 
Also, uh, the princess has been firing at these pterodon riders the whole time. They've lost so many models already. Um, it's pretty huge. Pretty huge. Really good just to whittle them down at range, you know, with the princess. Anyway, this stegodon is getting absolutely wrecked, even with apotheosis. He just can't heal quick enough. It's taking so much damage. This is ludicrous. Ludicrous amount of damage from the uh, Scissors of Avalon here. Really easy to shut them down. Because ancient stegodons, they're worth about two grand. You don't want them getting killed. Um, that, look at this. this is, it's insane. So we will get... No, no, he won't reach. Never mind. Anyway, the skinks have managed to get around the back, and uh, there's not really enough in the back line to protect all this. So uh, that's quite scary, honestly. And in the front line, the white lines of Trace, they are getting really chewed up by basically everything. So that's not good. The back line is really compromised very early. Uh, Croxigore's coming in here. Looks like they're going for the rear charge to shut this stuff down. Beautiful breath attack, doing a lot of damage to the Slant Mage Priest. It's very handy indeed. And you can see these Scissors of Avalon are actually shooting into what's attacking the other Scissors of Avalon, so you can get both of them free quicker. Of course, the Phoenix Guard, they can have no problem killing the uh, Skin Cohort. That's not a problem at all. Um, here, Tempest on the Princess. Uh, Arcane Unforging as well to get some extra damage in, which is definitely going to hurt. And a few shots from the uh, Ancient Stegodon trying to do some extra damage. So the Princess taking a bit of a beating. Um, and unfortunately, uh, yeah, the Lord Master Hoth is pretty bogged down here. And there's a big, scary Saurus Scar veteran trying to kill him. That's not really going to do. Uh, luckily, though, that Eagle Claw Bolter has got quite a lot of damage onto the, you know, the Saurus Scar veteran already. So the dragon here is just going to chew up that ancient Stegodon. You can see Banishment has absolutely devastated this unit, Sis of Avalon. Uh, Professor Bone did see it in time and ran away, but the Banishment just landed perfectly on that unit. So that's really unfortunate. Now, trying to attack the Slant Mage Priest, and here, this is this is the beautiful use of Shield of the Old Ones. Uh, these guys do magic attack, magic uh, damage, so that's huge. So, 44% of that is being negated. And as well as that, they've uh, the Slant Mage Priest, how much... How much resistance does he have? I don't want to see that logo. Go away. Okay, stop. Tell me about rallying units. There we go. 40% missile resist as well. He's barely going to take any damage once that's going. So uh, here it does get Spirit Leech on him. Uh, amazingly, the Lord Master Hoeth is very comfortable in this fight. Going to start chasing him down. Uh, but Stegodon managed to come back, which is pretty crazy. Uh, saw a Skull Veteran coming in. These Sisters of Avalon, they're taking a lot of damage, but they are such vital targets. They have to be dealt with. Another Apotheosis on the Scar Veteran, and all the front line is really suffering. There's only one unit left in the front line. It's the signs of Mathlan. That's all that's left. They can't hold out against Crocs of and Temple Guard. That's just not going to happen. Uh, the Lord Master Hoeth, he's kind of stuck in here. Princess has actually taken a fair bit of damage. Stegodon finally seems to be going, but believe it or not, he will come back. It's crazy. So, uh, here... A lot of stuff getting sort of whittled away here, and unfortunately the skinks coming back. They're really going to deal with the Sis of Avalon without anything sort of quick um, on the high elf side, like uh, Illyrian Reavers or something. You can't chase this stuff down until it shatters. Um, it's going to keep coming back, so it's very scary. You know, you're going to have to keep saving these expensive units from just cheap crap like this. It makes it very difficult. So here you can see the princess is going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Saurus Scar veteran. He's done some pretty good damage here. Uh, Slant Mage Priest, super injured. Croxigors, though, they're still going, but they're not going to hold up well against Phoenix Guard. The Phoenix Guard are kind of designed for armored large units like Croxigors. They're going to get a lot of damage in. So here you can see um, more Saurus Warriors now coming in. Uh, the Everqueen's Court Guard, I don't think... I don't think this is really great for them, truth be told. Um, I think they might all get murdered. Just a hunch. So, uh, as have these ones. That's a real pity. So the Skinks are finishing them off, and they will just keep chasing them. There's no reason not to. These Skinks aren't going to affect the rest of this battle. But if the Sis of Avalon can come back, even with 12 of them, getting a few volleys into any of this stuff is going to be vital. So we may as well just chase them away. Here, another Banishment's about to come down. You'll see it will do some fairly good damage to the Phoenix Guard here. So, yep, that's not bad. That's not bad. Maybe 5 or 10%. Damage there, not huge, but when you think it's five or ten percent of Phoenix Guard, that is pretty vital. So uh, another another um, Spirit Leech on the Slan Mage Priest. Some missile attacks coming in from the Princess, and uh, we'll see he's about to get finished by the um, what's it called the volley of high arrows, which we'll see in a second. So uh, a bit surrounded, not looking great, and any minute now, any second now, and yes, the Stegodon is back, which is just ridiculous. Absolute madness that he's still going. So the Slan, still still pretty happy, despite being nearly dead. Oh, come on. I know it happens. Come on. Come on, buddy. Really? Have I gone mad? Maybe I have. No, here it comes. In a second. It happens, guys. I'm not going crazy. Anyway, so, saw a Scar Veteran chasing away the uh, Lawmaster Hoeth. Not great. Ah, here we go. Volley of High Arrows. Boom. One dead Slan. 
I told you, I told you guys, I wasn't making it up. Um, but, yeah, with the Sora Scar veteran chasing away the Lawmaster, that unit has been wiped out. Uh, yep, the, one of the skinks has chased away the last of those Sisters of Avalon. Um, there's only really this unit of signs of Mathlan, the incredibly injured Phoenix Guard, and uh, the Eagle Claw Ball Thrower crew um, left on the ground, which doesn't look great for the Princess. Because um, Temple Guard, very good anti large. Sora Scar veteran, very good anti large. Amazingly, Lawmaster Hoth is back, though. That's pretty great. Um, so, very scary thing. So we went for a breath attack over here to try and deal with these Temple Guard, because any kills on these guys will be hugely beneficial, because it's going to come down to just the dragon soon, you know? There's very little else left. So, unfortunately, that breath attack seemed to spell doom for the Phoenix Guard, unfortunately. Um, it did some damage to them, and they just didn't have as much health to give. So, they're gone. But, saw a Scar Veteran finishing off uh, Signs of Mathland. That's also not great. Um, so, what have we got? We've got a Lawmaster Hoeth. And we got a princess. That's literally it for the High Elves right now. Um, maybe these guys will come back, but uh, otherwise, it's not looking great. So you can see the princess just diving in, trying to get rid of the Sora Scar veteran. This is going to be the, it's the hardest hitting thing left in the army, so it has to go. It just has to go. And it kind of has. That's, uh, that was pretty damn good. Well played, dragon. That was, uh, that was some good dragon biting. Well played. Uh, here, though, Lawmaster Hoth completely bogged down, but he is anti-infantry, um, you know, anti-armor as well. He's going to do well against the Temple Guard. Um, he doesn't want to be sat fighting them all day, but he's going to definitely help. So that's good news. I mean, every attack should kill one of the Temple Guard. Uh, same with the Dragon, to be honest, but obviously the Dragon's going to take a lot of damage from this stuff. So many of these guys can be in base contact with the Princess. So many of them can hit her at once. You really don't want to get bogged down by Temple Guard. Amazingly, the Phoenix Guard have come back. Only 15 left, and you can't even see their health bar. It's only at 360. So, basically any hit on any of these units is probably going to kill a model, so that's not good. Temple Guard are running away. Terrified. They're not immune to psychology, so that's pretty great. Um, probably should chase them some more, to be honest. Um, I think keep chasing them. Everything else, the Dragon can kill pretty happily. Uh, Croc Score is going to be a bit of a nuisance, obviously. Really want to save the Lawmaster here. Oof. Yeah. Okay, that is some horrible damage on the Lawmaster. Luckily, I think terrifies, but not quick enough. Um, yeah, the Lawmaster just shattered. That's not good. That's not good at all. But hey, Phoenix got it back, so that's good. Um, I'm sure these guys can handle it with their no health whatsoever. Anyway, all these guys are regrouping. Croxagore still going. Uh, another charge on the Temple Guard. Just, you've got to keep charging these guys. If you can get good hits on them, that is, that is golden. Um, unfortunately, though, the Croxagores, they're going to catch up to this princess. And they do actually hit hard enough to be able to stagger her. Uh, that is not good. That is not good at all. You really don't want the princess getting staggered when she's surrounded by Temple Guard. But but she's trying to get out, as you can tell by all the voice lines. Pwn is very adamant that she leaves. Uh, here, though, Phoenix Guard, they're going to come in, but they're not looking too good either. Um, they're pretty hurt. Uh, but hopefully, just with Encouragement Aura, they might hold out a bit. Um, Crocs of Ghouls, they do have anti-infantry and anti-armor as well. As yeah, So, yeah, they're kind of good at countering each other, but luckily the dragon can swoop in and, you know, do a lot of damage to these Crocs of Ghouls. But again, not quite soon enough. The Phoenix Guard have already decided they're out, which is not not good at all. So here, Princess is fighting the... Uh, I'm, I'm actually just calling the dragon Princess, by the way, rather than saying the Princess. No, it's just Princess, the dragon. Um, anyway, Princess is fighting all this stuff off. There's still Temple Guard in here. Um, this stuff has actually got quite good leadership, but as you can see, it's not lasting for long, because every hit from this thing is going to do a lot of damage. Uh, I say this thing, I mean her, little Princess, anyway. Phoenix Guard, still back, still eager, still eager. They lost five models last time. Maybe they can come in and, you know, mix things up. As you can see, Princess is very, very hurt. She's getting scared, poor thing. And uh, it's just Temple Guard left, really. Um, everything else has been terrified. <gasps> They've been terrified. These guys are back. They're back. Um, stuff's coming back again. But hey, ten Phoenix Guard and Princess should be fine. So, um, oh, and I guess that woman sat on top of Princess anyway. So uh, he, she's going to fly up in the air. And... Uh, gonna go for that temple guard again. They're the one thing that needs to die. Can't be in prolonged combat with them. Can't be attacking something else and let the temple guard sneak up on you. You just gotta kill them. That's the one thing that's gonna cause hassle. And the phoenix guard amazingly have kept these Saurus warriors busy. And that stuff terrifies. And that stuff breaks. That's game. Unbelievably close. Princess nearly dead. Uh, phoenix guard wavering. Um, that's all that was left. Unbelievable. But Jesus Christ, just some of the some of the stuff just performed amazingly. The front line, yeah, they got a few kills, but they buckled pretty damn quickly, to be honest. Um, just under the weight of the enemy front line, it was pretty huge. But, Sis of Avalon, you know, both of them, they got so much work done. 
just the fact that they basically took out a Stegodon, you know, in the first 30 seconds of, of the game, um, unbelievable. These guys are so capable, but they are very difficult to protect because they're going to be going all out to try and shut these guys down. And unfortunately, Pwn did not have a very wide front line. He didn't have a load of different spearmen or cavalry. He had nothing with mass, basically, that could bog that stuff down. Um, so it meant they were very vulnerable. But they got a lot of damage in before they were taken out. Although, was it enough? Because, I mean, the Stegodon's 2,000. These guys are, what, like, 1,200 and 1,400, something like that? So was that worthwhile? I don't know. But it was definitely cool to see these guys performing. Um, and that dragon was just amazing. Princess, what a beaut. Love that Star Dragon. Did a great job. Lawmaster Howarth really pulled his weight. Got some good damage in. It was pretty fantastic. Really close match. Um, great to see just a tiny elite army uh, performing. It's really cool to see. Uh, but really do like this Lisbon army as well. Having the missile resist on the Slant Mage Priest and using the shield of the old ones. Um, not for the sort of leadership buffs or toward against magic as such, but the magic missiles. Because frankly, Sisters of Avalon, you're going to see them in every every match versus Hiles and Lizardmen, because you've just got to have that armor-piercing missile damage, you know? So uh, these guys are going to be such popular picks, you really want something that can negate a load of the damage, and Shield the Old Ones does that brilliantly. So it's really cool to see that in use, and uh, the concept of apotheosis and all the rest of it, um, just some great use of spells um, in there. Absolutely beautiful. So yeah, really cool game. So thanks for saying this in, Pwn. And uh, guys, if you don't know, he's got a flourishing YouTube channel that you should be sure to check out. And uh, if you enjoyed this, please do comment, like, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Have a good one, guys.